What's going on you guys? My name is Ben Can and today we're going to be Shelby dropping my 1965 Mustang. So let's head over to the workbench and see what we'll need to get the job done. So what you're going to need is a template and I picked one up for 25 bucks and this is a metal one. You can use a paper one but that's not really precision at all right? Like <laughs> something can go wrong. So me I'm into getting everything perfect so went with a metal one and the kit also came with a drill bit so that was cool. So that's all you need really, just gotta get a drill and some other things, so let's get to it. So before we get started, I was thinking I should probably tell you guys why we're doing this and some of the history behind it. So on the history end, this was done by Carol Shelby on all the GT350s and the GT500s to make their cars handle better. So what we're gonna be doing is lowering the upper control arm about an inch downward, and this does three main things. So it lowers the car's center of gravity, it reduces the body roll of the car by 10%, and it improves the camber curve of the car. So let's go do it. So the first thing we're gonna do is jack up the car and remove the wheels. So if you don't have coilovers, what you're gonna need to do is get a spring compressor to remove the whole shock. But in my case, since I have coilovers, I'm just gonna remove the bottom bolts that connect them to the control arm and that's all I'm gonna have to do. So let's go do it. Now we're gonna remove the cotter pin that prevents the castle nut from moving. So now that the cotter pins are out, I'm gonna loosen the castle nut down to its last two threads and then I'm gonna hit the spindle in order for it to get it to separate. So now that everything's taken apart down there, we're gonna have to loosen up the bolts inside the engine bay and then we can finally pull out the upper control arm. Well, it looks like I'm a really bad planner because there's a rainstorm coming in right now, which is really killing my plans because we're halfway through, probably need like a couple more hours or so. It takes a long time because I'm filming each clip, it just exaggerates the whole process. So I'll catch up with you guys whenever it stops raining. So as you can tell, it's the next day. No more rain, right? Thank God. So let's get back to work. Now that the upper control arm's out, we can bolt in the template uh, using the pre-existing holes that the upper control arm was using. Um, in my specific kit, it says to use a half inch bolt to secure this template in. So let's get started. So an important thing to mention is that you're gonna want the pilot holes towards the rear of the car. So now that the template's in, we're gonna use a really small drill bit drill through the template and then remove the template and then go size by size up until we finally get to 1730 seconds as the final drill bit and that should be the proper size hole. Now that the new holes are drilled, I'm going to put in the upper control arm and then put it back on the spindle. Now that everything's back into place, I'm going to tie in the castle nut and the nuts inside the engine bay. Before we move on, we're going to want to put a cotter pin through the castle nut to make sure nothing moves later down the road. So the last thing we're gonna do down here is put back on the coilover or shock or whatever you have and then put the wheels back on the car and lower it. So stay tuned for more videos, they'll be coming. I know I've been a lag, I just finished finals and I moved back home. So all I have to do now is film. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned, see you guys soon. Yeah. 